Well, welcome back to the channel, sports fans. Well, today we are going to be taking a six-month review of this diesel air heater. And I'll be answering some frequently asked questions that I've been getting on it. So, um, as you can hear my dog inside, he's sniffing because he can hear me. So, as many of y'all seen, I put this in a Harbor Freight toolbox. Um, you know this wasn't my original location. But this has been... Once I moved it, just a day after I put, attached it to the uh, cabin, this is where it's been all winter long. You can see I've got about two-thirds tank left. So, how has this operated? And this is my setup. For some of y'all that didn't catch it. And by the way, this is a Mayapple, and I hate those things. Um, i got to get some... Round up over here. This is my battery. This is my battery charger. And I have a, um, yeah, you can see it right there, extension cord running down to the battery charger. So every time I turn on the generator um, to run the stuff in the house, it turns my charger on, which charges the battery. So, okay, so you see my setup here. This has worked actually pretty good and this is my hose going in so um one of the first questions I, I, while i'm standing here is they want to know how hot this thing gets and i measure temperatures this winter oh, oh check out the little gecko looking can you see them over there sorry not a squirrel but a gecko he's going up my wall there Hey, you're on YouTube, Mr. Lizard. Yeah. He says, I don't care. I think you're going to eat me. So anyway, this is the uh, backside of the enclosure. It has worked very well. Now, when it rained, I would come out here, and or when we were supposed to get rain, I would pull this, slide this over. When I mean, you see all the water that trapped, <laughs> because it was level, but this would also tilt it and allow the rain to run off so anyway um how much uh no they want to know yeah, how hot i measure temperatures it all depends on your intake it brings air in right here it, it depends on your outside temperature or, or the air that it's bringing in now some people put these in vans and buses and stuff and it, they're pulling the air in from the inside the building or inside their van or bus, whatever. So you'll get a higher output temperature. This one being outside pulled outside air. And I was getting anywhere when it was, you know, in the 20s and teens. I would get anywhere from about 115 to 125 degrees air coming out. Uh, that sounds like a lot, and it is if you're right up on it. But but if you're in that uh, ten and a half by twenty foot cabin, and it's fifteen degrees Fahrenheit outside, that's not a whole lot to heat that cabin. Okay. Now I can understand people in vans and buses and and stuff like that, smaller enclosures, where that will warm up. Someone said, well, you need to put an intake hose. Well, I could do that, but I'd have to have like a 20-foot one to run out the back here and all the way back over there because you don't want an intake hose very close to your output or you'll just be recirculating the hot air right there or, or the majority of the hot air. So that would have been a pain in the butt to run another, another hole in my wall way over there. Plus, that would have been under the bed, which... You know, tell them what would have got out of there. So, I didn't. But on uh, days like um, here lately, it's middle of May, and I'm still using this. We still have some mornings in the mid 40s. <laughs> Oddly enough, this is a strange year. And when it's in the mid 40s to say mid 30s, I can get about 140 degree uh, temperatures out of the air. So hopefully that answered that. So let's move on.
I'm sure the camera's not picking up, but can y'all hear that sound? That is like honey, it has to be honeybee someplace. And I have looked and I have looked and it's just echoing or something. It, you, I can't pinpoint it. It's driving me nuts. Every warm day out here, I can hear them. And every time I, no matter what direction I face, it's like I'm hearing them. <laughs> I'm going nuts trying to find these bees. So now that you know some of my, my things that are just irritating me, keep finding these bees I can hear them uh, so anyway um, uh, overall review of the Chinese diesel air heater six months uh, if you want to see how I installed it um, unboxing all that I think there's a playlist up here I'll link to Ah, uh, I had biscuit or we call them locusts. Um, anyway, I ain't much to say about it. I turn it on, it comes on, it works, it blows hot air, I turn it off. It, as far as performance, it has worked the way I want. I hadn't really done it. Once I hooked it up and got the battery, I only got that battery set up the way I wanted. So basically hands off. I keep my battery charger to it all the time. And whenever I start my um, uh, generator to power my TV, whatever, um, my cabin, it automatically starts my charger, which automatically starts charging the battery. I haven't touched it in months. Uh, so it's worked where I wanted to. Now, you may have seen in another video, there's two ways you can use this Chinese diesel air heater, a thermostat or a set the pulse uh, fuel rate. The first night, <laughs> I tried the thermostat because, hey, that's what we do, right? We set the thermostat the temperature we want. Oh, one of the worst nights of my life, <laughs> as far as sleeping wise. Because what happens is, this will, they'll run, and they get to the temperature. It doesn't never shut off, but they get to temperature, and they hold it there. And they go down, pulse, the, the, the fuel delivery go down, which lowers the fan speed and all that. So, And then when it gets, like, rises up one degree above what you you set it say if you set it at 20 degrees celsius and that's the only way you can set it is celsius so you'll get if you don't know the celsius you'll either get really good at learning it or you'll get good at googling it so anyway so once it goes one degree below then this thing starts racing it's it's like oh oh my gosh it went one degree below we gotta hurry up. this thing will speed up and, and it will blow like crazy and the pump rate will go up and Oh, it, it's loud, okay? So, next I went to the constant fuel rate, pulse rate, and that's what I used the rest of the winter. Uh, I wouldn't go over about three pulses a second because then the, it would just suck up the fuel so but as far as did it come on when I wanted to did it blow warm hot air yes 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 so kind of you know I, I don't have no complaints other than it's just not meant to efficiently heat a 10 and a half by 20 foot cabin in the winter now if I'd had two of them yeah but then I've been using a lot more fuel so but that, that takes me into the free, uh, free, blah, blah, frequently asked questions of how much fuel does it, do they use. Well, that depends. Now I have it set down as low as it goes. I think the low is 1.6 pulses a second. The high is like five or five and a half pulses. I've never had it up that high. Although it did get that high at one night when it was on thermostat trying to heat up. And it sounded like that thing was going to take off. 
So, so I kept, I tried to keep it, like I said, the most on the coldest days was around three. And it would use about a gallon and a quarter to a gallon and a half a, in a 12 hour period. So basically almost a whole tank in 24 hours. Set at three. That's two and a half gallons of diesel. That's a lot of diesel. Because I never, when it got the coldest out, now, the nine coldest days I was gone, if you remember, I evacuated, so. But, besides that, the days we had in the 20s and stuff, I had to keep it around three, and I was never really toasty warm. I had a bunch of clothes on and stuff, so. But it, for me, it works well, like, like, in the mornings, when it's in the mid-40s, I get up. Well, typically, I will run it first two, you know, one or two hours before I go to bed, warm the cabin up, turn it off, because if I don't, I'll wake up so hot, I can't, you know, stand it. Um, so by four or five o'clock in the morning when I get up to pee, it's, the cabin's cooled down, it's a little chilly, I'll turn it on and go back to bed, and then when I, when I get up, it's nice and warm, I turn it off for the day. Like that, I don't know. You seen how much? It was like two thirds left. Now I put filled that up a couple days ago. And when you're using it, from my experience, two pulses or less um, a second. Hey, Titmouse just pooped on my stove over there. So when you're using around two pulses, or you know, even maybe 2.3 pulses a second or, or less. You can get a pretty long run time out of that tank, two and a half gallon tank. So, um, how much fuel does it use? It's, it's up to you and what you set it on. So, um, another thing people want to know is how loud it is. Now, you know, our first time I had it mounted to, I had that pump and everything mounted to the back of the cabin. Oh my gosh, all night long, that pump pulses. And I heard boom, boom. Boom, boom. And when it would speed up, the thermostat would kick it up to try to boom, 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 boom. It sound like someone back of the cabin, you know. If you do this, do not mount that pump. Even though it has a rubber isolator, do not mount it to your cabin. Do, do, do like I do. Um, get it separated from the cabin. But other than that, when it starts up, that fan is really cranking. And you can hear that. And when it shuts off, um, it will really crank up. So uh, you can hear that. But when it's just running on 1.6, you can't hear it. So it, it, it's it's about like a window unit. When it's cranking up at first, it, it's maybe like a window unit on high. You know, you hear that fan. When it's running regularly, you can't hear if you got the. Well, even without the TV and stuff on, you can't hear it. Um, how much 12 volt power does that use? On startup, it uses it because it's got, it's got the glow plugs going, it's got the fan going, it's got a whole nine yards going. It uses 5 to 7 amps on startup. Once the glow plugs go, go off, or glow plug goes off, and the fan comes down, while it's running on about you know, two, 2.3 pulses or less, um, less than an amp, like 0.5 amp, half an amp maybe or something, it, it'll last, it, it doesn't use much at all, because you're just running, the, at that point, you're just running the fan and L LCD readout, so, um, let me check my notes and see what else y'all been asking, how loud, how much robo power, is it hard to install? Well, you see my install videos. No, it's not. It's very easy. The hardest part, if there has to be a hardest part, is drilling the tank to get the the um, little port thing on so you can connect the fuel line. And still, I have no idea why in any world they don't do that factory. They could mold that tank with a, a, a spout already, I mean, a, a, a nipple already there to connect the fuel. Who knows? That's Chinese. 
Uh, how, how do we get that? I showed you that. How much will they use? And are they safe? The last one. Are they safe? I haven't had a problem out of this. One. Uh, people, like I said, they were mainly, they were originally built, probably, I don't know, 80 years ago by the Germans, to heat sleepers of, of tractor trailers. So, um, this one, I can touch the outside of the case while it's running, and it's a little warm. Um, but there's people, like I said, they put them in their vans, they put them in their campers, you know, They're safe. As far as I can, I'm concerned, they're safe. If it wasn't for the noise and the smell, no, that's a, another thing. If it wasn't for the noise and the, and the occasional smell of diesel, I'd put it in the house. Now, there are times when this thing sets and I go to turn it on. That first initial, when, when the glow plugs come on and I'm look, looking over at LCD and I see the glow plugs on and I hear the fan ramping up and the combustion takes. I get a whiff of diesel every once in a while. I don't know if that's the um, intake pulling in some exhaust or what, um, or if it's something in the combustion chamber itself. Don't know, but it doesn't last long. And that's not every time, that's just when it has set for a while. So, yeah, I do uh, do one. That's my only two really complaints if you want to call them that um, it's just not big enough to comfortably heat this cabin when it's cold really cold and every once in a while I get a whiff of diesel fuel, fuel so if you have a cabin like this maybe a little smaller and those bees sound like they're getting closer I've got to go find those things and that means getting covered up by ticks but anyway, and you know, I don't see many hen bees around. Every once in a while I'll see one, but anyway, sorry, bee. Um, you know, if you live in a smaller cabin than I do, like I said, this is, the inside dimensions are 10 and a half by 20. Uh, and, and this is insulated. So if you live in something my size or larger, I probably I go wood stove. Good Lord, be willing, by this fall, I will have my wood stove installed. Something smaller, especially if you live maybe in the farther south than I do, where it just doesn't get that cold. You lived up in Michigan or, you know, Canada or something, and you're trying to heat something like this. If you've got an unlimited supply of diesel fuel, go for it. But, you know, especially now, diesel's over three bucks a gallon. Back then, uh fall it was around uh, two and a quarter and i probably i probably used conservative estimate over 125 gallons of diesel through this this winter so just saying y'all um it is an option but it's a very limited option so that's about all i can help you with on it um you got any other questions i hadn't thought of go ahead and ask them in the comment section below i'll be happy to try and answer them so hopefully in another week or so, I'll be taking it off the battery and uninstalling it because I'm not going to leave that set up throughout the summer because I'm fixing to start, you know, within a few weeks, probably be running the air conditioner. I won't have to worry about it. But like I said, we're still getting evenings, mornings in the mid forties here. So uh, I hope that has helped you. If you've been considering a Chinese diesel heater to heat your off grid cabin or some other place you live, maybe you got an old trailer or, you know, RV or something. They're great for that. You know, what was funny was one guy said when I mentioned on one of the forums that it didn't do that well heating my cabin when it was really cold outside. Well, I live in a 35 foot fifth wheel and it heats my bedroom just fine. All I have to do is put a blanket across the door. Well, no crap, Sherlock. How big is your bedroom once you do that? <laughs> this would be a great room here for that. But it wouldn't heat his total 35 foot fifth wheel. Because he had to put a blanket across his door to, to, uh, to hold the heat in. So just keep that stuff in mind. So anyway, 
Thank y'all for watching Donald One Acre Home Care. Please like me and subscribe below. And if you know anybody that's considering a Chinese diesel air heater, go ahead and send them this video. I appreciate it. We'll catch you later.